Welcome to electron line. Now let's see what happens with a real pendulum when the temperature changes and the length of the real pendulum changes. How much will the period of this pendulum change when the temperature goes from an initial temperature of 30 degrees centigrade to 0 degrees centigrade? The real pendulum is an 8 foot long bar made out of steel with a mass equal to m and the coefficient of expansion, linear expansion, is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 5 per centigrade degree. All right, how do we do that? Well, let's first calculate how much the length will change in a change of temperature of 30 degrees. So what we can say is that the length, the final length, will be equal to the original length plus the change in the length, which means the original length I guess I should write it like this, uh, plus L initial times the coefficient times the change in the temperature. All right, I can factor out an L sub naught, so the length final will be equal to the original length times 1 plus the coefficient, which is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 5 per centigrade degree, and we multiply it times a change of minus 30 centigrade degrees because it goes from 30 down to 1 so it's a negative change then we need to close the bracket and let's see what that's equal to so we have a 1.2 e5 minus times 30 yes so that will be equal to l final equals l initial times 1 minus 3.6 times 10 to the minus 4. Okay, so minus plus 1 equals, so it would be L final equals L initial times 0 0.99964. So now we know how the length changes. Now we need to find the relationship between the change in the length and the period. So we could say that the frequency of oscillation for a real pendulum is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the square root of mg times the length to the center of mass divided by the moment of inertia, because now we're dealing with a real pendulum. So the period, which is equal to 1 over the frequency, is therefore 2 pi times the square root of the moment of inertia divided by mg times the distance to the center of mass and of course for a bar like that the center of mass would be at the halfway point okay plugging in what we know that this is equal to 2 pi times the square root of the moment of inertia of a bar swinging about its end that would be one third mass times the length squared divided by mg times the length of center mass which would be half the length because halfway down so simplifying this, notice that the mass cancels, one of the L's cancels, so we know that the period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of, we get 2 L over 3 G. And since 2, 3, and G are all constants, and only L is the variable here, as the length changes, the period changes, you can see that the period is proportional to the square root of L, so therefore the change in the period is proportional to the, squ the square root of the change in L. So if we take the square root of that, that would be therefore the period, the change in the period is proportional to the square root of 0 0.99964, which if we take the square root of that, which is 0 0.99982, 99982. So we can see that the change in the period is proportional to this number right here. All right. And that is, of course, in this particular pendulum with a change of 30 degrees. Now we need to see how much the time changes. So let's figure out the period initially. So the initial period is equal to and that would be the equation right here, would be equal to 2 pi times the square root of 2 times the original length divided by 3g. So that would be equal to 2 pi times the square root of 2 times 8 feet. Of 
course, we have to convert that to meters, which is 0 0.3048 meters per foot. So that's how we convert that to meters, divided by 3 times g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. That means the original period is going to be, and my calculator. Okay, we have 16 times 0 0.3048 divided by 3 divided by 9.8. Take the square root, multiply it times 2, and multiply it times pi, and we get 2 point, let me write that down here. Oop, I need to find some room for my calculator. All right. 2.559.0200 seconds. Of course, I kept a few extra not so significant figures, but that's all right. That helps us make sure we, we run off at the end. Okay, now the change in the period. Notice that the change in the period is equal to this much. So the delta t, and of course, realizing that the the pendulum is going to shrink, which means that the period is actually going to, let's see here, a shorter, that would be a faster period. So the period will increase. So the delta t is equal to 0 0.9982, 0 0.9982. Am I missing a 9? Yes, I'm missing a 9. Okay, 3 nines, a 2 multiply times 2.5590200 seconds. And so the delta T is equal to, oh, 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 oh. it'll be one minus that one. Hmm, I need to do this again. All right, it'll be one minus this. The delta T will be equal to, one minus that amount. Okay, so let's try that. Um, it'll be one minus 0.99982 multiplied times 2.5590200. And so we end up with 4.6 times 10 to the minus 4 seconds. And of course, that will be an increase, so it's a positive quantity. So that's what we're looking for. And then the t final is going to be equal to the t initial plus the delta t. t initial plus delta t. Well, actually, it's minus delta t because it's going to go faster because it's shrunk in size. So that will be equal to the initial time minus this. So minus plus 2.55902. So we have 2.55. Five, eight, seven, four seconds for the T final, in case we're interested in knowing what that is. So it's a shorter period because it's shrunk in size. The oscillation will be quicker, and that's the delta time, the change in the period of that particular pendulum. And that is how it's done.